What is going on, beautiful people? Welcome to another episode of the Narcissist Code. I am your favorite self-aware narcissist, Mr. Lee Hammock, better known as Mental Illness from TikTok, Instagram, YouTube. You know where to find me. If this is your first time seeing my face or hearing my voice, I am a diagnosed narcissist, and I use my platform to raise awareness for narcissistic personality disorder, get more people into therapy, and... Mm, sorry. Also in the process of doing all of that, validate the victims and survivors of said disorder. Today's episode is going to be about forgiving a narcissist. Uh, how can you tell if a narcissist has, has really changed? So, hey, look, so first of all, let me say this. I know that everybody is not diagnosed, diagnosed as a narcissist, and I don't have the ability to do that. I know a lot of people think I'm out here trying to diagnose people and paint paint people in the picture, but I'm literally out here telling my story and how I react to things and how I handle certain situations in life and why I do what I do from my perspective of being an actual diagnosed person with narcissistic personality disorder. So going from the top of everything, like people, when you leave a narcissist or when you break up with a narcissist and you are consistently taking them back, forgiving them and reconciling with them, you are becoming an enabler to their behavior. I know people are going to like, well, Lee, you, you're calling people enablers that are not enablers, but like literally to the narcissist, you are saying that you are OK with the behavior because you are accepting blanket apologies, uh, blanket apologies or no apology at all. You're just letting them stay there or y'all just act like nothing happened. But, you know, deep down or not even deep down, you're unhappy. But the narcissist, like as much as you will take, they will give. I say this all the time. There's like. A narcissist is going to feed you, be, continue, to, continue to feed you BS if you keep eating it. If you don't spit it back up, if you keep taking it down, if you keep taking spoonful after spoonful of BS and devouring it like it's like a third, like your favorite meal, then they're going to continue feeding you BS. Like again, today I talked, uh, I got a message the other day from a woman. Like I don't know, it's just like having babies inside the marriage. Like when you are married to somebody and you have. Not only one, but multiple babies by different women outside the marriage. While you're still married, like two, three babies, and you just take that person back, then you are saying you are okay with that. The narcissist is not going to change. Are, are they going to change? He said he was sorry. He said he was sorry, so we wouldn't have had another baby and another one outside the marriage. So he's did not only divvying up, like y'all both working, so he's taking your income and paying child support on babies that he made with cheating on you with. And by you taking that person back consistently, you are saying that you are okay with that behavior. Are you okay with it? You're gonna say no, but if you look deep, if you if you listen to what I'm saying, you you are actually saying that you're okay with their behavior and how they are acting. Because if you consistently take them back, I'm sorry, I was in a bad place, or they'll blame you. Because sometimes, like the narcissist will get to the point where they gaslight you so much that they'll blame you for being for for cheating on you, and you'll end up apologizing. Well, I'm so sorry, I didn't trust you. I'm so sorry, I pushed you to cheat on me, and you'll apologize for them cheating on you. Which which gives them the go ahead to cheat on you again, to cheat on you more. If I say the only you know the only apology that you should should accept from a narcissist or anybody is consistent change behavior. We are willing to take so much less for what? Though? Like what are you getting from these people? Other than like I guess yeah, I, I call it narcissistic math. This is what I call narcissist narc, narc math, narcissistic math, narcissist math or whatever. I say do this do this equation right here. And it'll help you put things into perspective. If that narcissist leaves you or you break up with them or they leave you, what are you absolutely what are you losing? What exactly are you going to be missing outside of their body, outside of their presence or their penis or their cheeks? What are you absolutely losing? What is what is the loss here? I know sometimes you're going to say finances, sometimes you're going to say this comfort, safety, whatever. What are you losing other than their body that you can't get from somebody else that you can't give to yourself? Because I talk to so many successful, financially stable people that are afraid to lose narcissists because like, what if they treat the next person better? Like, who cares if they treat the next person better? They didn't cheat on you nine times. Let that person go. Let that hurt go. Let that hurt go so you can grow. Like, I keep telling people, people are willing to accept them so much, the bare minimum. And a narcissist is going to, they don't even, like, you get to the point where you keep, you just keep reconciling with them and you just keep forgiving them. They don't even try any hard, try hard to lie to you anymore. They'll just cheat on you and just tell you not to ask any questions. Like, if not, and I've heard people say that before too. They'll say some stuff like, well, the relationship isn't that bad unless I question the cheating or why we don't have, why we don't have sex or why we don't do anything. It's not actually that bad. All right, we get along very well outside of the cheating and the gaslighting and the lying. All right, I was like, okay. Okay. We are just, like, goodness gracious. 
we got to come back down to reality and allow yourself to heal because like I, I if you decide to leave you cannot uh, you decide to leave a narcissist you cannot heal in the same environment that made you sick you just can't do that and i know a lot of people are going to say hey a lot of people are going to say you know well, hey look i know but i know you say that lee but we live together and i'm healing for i'm he i'm healing perfectly fine okay you are the exception and not the rule now i say like consistent change behavior how, how can you tell the narcissist hey lee but how can i tell if they haven't if they change if they if i don't let them back into my life hey typically they're going to blow you up they're going to blow you when you break up with them you leave a narcissist they're going to blow you up they're going to beat down your door this is typically i'm saying typically not all the time this is typically they're going to blow up they're going to blow your phone up they're going to show up to your work they're going to come by your house they're going to call you consistently text you consistently facebook instagram snapchat everything every social media is going to be blown up if they are really changing they should be able to leave you alone when you are not responding to them they shouldn't send you something to make you feel guilty about not responding to them when you're not coming when you're not allowing them to come see you they should not make you feel guilty about not letting them come see you because they they want to, people want to be rewarded for their progress hey i hey i haven't cheated on you in two weeks can i come see you huh can we talk can we see each other now i haven't cheated on you in three whole weeks i deserve a pat on the back or some cheeks Oh, I deserve to have my cheeks clap. Or whatever. You mean? I deserve to put the cheeks on you. Whatever whatever it comes to be. Like, uh, stop like oh my goodness. People being just I know I keep harping on it. I feel like I do this. I feel like I do this video once a week, honestly. Because I get it so much of so it's, it's just not enough people are connected on my YouTube. I keep repeating myself on YouTube, I feel like. Because not a lot of people watch the video. Even though I, even though I have like 92,000 followers, I only get like two, 3,000 views. So that means not everybody's connecting to the information or not everybody's seeing it. So that's cool. So I, I feel like I don't mind doing the same video over and over again. Because honestly, I tell y'all, it makes me angry when y'all just keep, keep reconciling with these people. And then you blame that person. That's how you look in real life. To people outside of narcissist TikTok or narcissist YouTube or narcissist Instagram, you look like you, you look crazy to some people. You look silly to some people when you're constantly forgiving somebody for cheating on you. And now look, I don't I'm not, I'm, this is not victim blaming. Hey, Lee, you're crossing the territory and the victim blaming. No, I'm not victim blaming. I'm just like telling you how you look to other people that don't understand the trauma bond and stuff like that. When you consistently are forgiving somebody and going back to that person, people are going to look down on you. People are going to be like, well, you did wow, yikes. And people are not going to be want to be around you. People are going to be like, you look crazy as hell taking that person back that keeps cheating on you, that keeps beating on you. Y'all don't have anything together. Y'all don't have a house together, no cars together, no nothing. Just Y'all just have sex. And y'all, you can't leave that? Well, it's so good. Okay, cool. You ain't never had no sex like this, Lee. You ain't never had no cheeks clapped like this, Lee. I know I have never had my cheeks clapped. Sorry. I've clapped some cheeks. I've never had my cheeks clapped. Hey man, I, I, I feel like people, you got to take your power back. Like, you giving up your life, so much, you're wasting the, the prime of your life for some cheeks or to get your cheeks clapped. That doesn't make no sense to me. Like, the sex is so good, I gave up my whole 20s with nothing to show for it. Learn from other people's mistakes. I feel like this generation is, is a good generation to do that because this generation, typically, it seems like more and more people in this generation are learning more from the p mistakes that their parents made their brothers and sisters made their older brothers and sisters made that their grandparents made this generation is learning more from their mistakes than any other generation i see but you can learn from somebody else's mistakes you see somebody else's you know I, in my comment sections like i stayed for 20 years y'all need to get out in 20 20 days 20 months 20 weeks y'all need to leave early i wish i would have left earlier so i could enjoy my life a little bit more you know what i mean i wish i could have left a little bit earlier to enjoy my life a little bit more and things like that but like people get held up Nowadays, you have the people have nowadays more people have the information in front of them than anything. I see. I keep seeing people. I wish I wish I'd have had this information ten years ago, twenty years ago. Some people have the information now and don't take heed to it. Some people take see the information, have the information, and go back into abusive into an abusive relationship because they think they can change the person. They really seem sorry this time. How, how did they really seem sorry this time? They they're crying. Okay. Tears that y'all be getting too much power to tears. I don't care. Somebody cried. Look, somebody, I can look, somebody crying to me. I can look them dead directly into the face and be like, okay, cool. Tears. Yay, tears. But I just feel like not right now, in this day and age, you should be able to take your power back from people. Stop giving people so much control over your life, so much control over your situations because you're worth more. But you have to believe that you're worth more. I can say that you're worth more. I can consistently say, hey, look, you're worth more than that. You deserve better than that. And it doesn't matter what I say. You have to believe it. 
You have to believe you deserve more than an abusive abusive boyfriend or abusive wife or abusive girlfriend. You deserve more than I caught her cheating five times. Okay, there should not be a sixth. There should have been a second. There should not be a sixth time you have to catch this person cheating for you realize you, you're worth king or queen. Put your crown on. Too many people have, have taken their crowns off their heads and given, given them to somebody else. And for what? What are you gaining by giving your crown to somebody else? What are you gaining? What are you gaining? I can see if you gain a ton of money. Like, I'm rich. Hey, I'll take a little narcissistic abuse. I'm rich. Okay, we can talk about that. But if you ain't getting nothing, if you are a breadwinner, if you are in control of it, if you are self-sufficient and independent, what are you getting other than some cheeks? Are you getting your cheeks clapped? Is it worth it? Worth it. Is it worth it? Is it worth giving up so much of your life to keep forgiving this person over and over and over again? You, you in, a, in your late 20s, forgiving somebody, wasting five years on somebody that it, that for nothing. Why did that person, why did, why did he marry the next person so quickly and he didn't try to marry me? Maybe the next person required that. Hey, I need a commitment from you ASAP. Maybe the next person made him commit. Maybe the ma next person made her commit. You didn't. You, was, you, you allowed it to go on for five, six years. Every time I talk about marriage, he would just he would just go away you need to make him go away take your power back make your intentions known don't like, don't give people the blueprint to hurt you manipulate you but make your intentions known like look i need uh, i need to know this is serious we gonna get I, I i look the clock is ticking the damn clock is ticking y'all it's ticking tick 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 it's not gonna click for too long it's not gonna tick for too long so take your power back, stand in your truth, and stand because you don't have you. Don't, we all have a limited amount of time on this earth, and it, to be wasting it on somebody who do, who doesn't value you, somebody that will easily replace you and give somebody else more than they ever gave you. There you go. Hey, why did they give the next person everything that I wanted? Because the next person might have required it. You didn't require it. Take the take this. The next time you get into a relationship, require shit. Stop letting people take advantage of you and just do what they want to do. Take your power back. This is a, this is an empowerment channel, and some of this stuff is going to come off as very very aggressive and very very mean because I have narcissistic personality disorder. My filter is dirty right now. You know what I mean? So I really truly appreciate every single one of y'all, but I want y'all to win. I'm winning. If I feel like I'm winning against narcissistic personality disorder, I feel like you can win against codependency. You can win against the trauma bond, and I'm rooting for you. The narcissist is rooting for you. Yeah, I'm in the corner with my pom poms, chilling, shaking. No tutu. I got pom poms on with some some. Uh, I got this is the image I'm putting in your head. I got on some a uh, long black tee, some some camo pants, and some wheat colored Timberlands, and with some pom poms cheering. Well, I'm I'm from the hood, but I got pom poms cheer cheerleading for you in the corner. But anyways, y'all, I got to cut this thing short. I really truly appreciate every single one of y'all. I'm thankful for every single one of y'all. Mental illness is out. Peace.